All right, so in this video, we're gonna be writing a program to determine if a given number is even or odd. And the kicker here is we don't want to make use of the modulus operator. So if you're not familiar in Python or in most other languages as well, the modulus operator is given as the percent sign. And if we have a given number, let's call it X, the way that we can determine whether or not X is even or odd using the modulus operator is we can, we can check whether or not X mod two is equal to zero. If this equation evaluates to true, if this is actually equal to zero, then the number X is even, and otherwise the number X is odd. So if you're not familiar with what the modulus operator is doing, it's basically just checking the remainder after division. So if we check whether or not X is divisible by two with no remainder, therefore two goes into X an even amount of times, that would indicate that the number X is even. If on the other hand, we divide X the number by two and we get a remainder of anything other than zero, so one, then this is going to uh, indicate that X is an odd number. So that's generally the way that you would do it in most cases, but in this case, we're going to not use the modulus operator, so we're gonna think about another way that we can do this, and we're going to use some bit manip manipulation to help us out. So what we're gonna first off start off by doing, I suppose, is just writing some of the binary numbers down and just taking a look at some of those binary numbers and see if we can exploit a pattern that we see arising from these binary numbers to see if there's any way that we can indicate whether or not a given binary number is even or odd and how we can kind of extract this information using just some very simple bit manipulation. So I'm gonna start another comment down here and I'm gonna start off by writing the first couple binary numbers. So we'll, I'm just gonna start off by writing the uh, numbers themselves. So let's let's go all the way up to seven and let's, let's uh, go ahead and say that zero in binary is all zeros, one, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a space here to kind of separate these things out so we can see. So just imagine that this here is the one spot, this here is the two spot, and this here is the four spot. So let me just move that back. Make sure that lines up, and two, and there we go. So there are no ones, there are no twos, and there are no fours in the binary representation of zero. In the binary representation of one, there is one, one, no twos and no fours. Moving right along here, there's no fours, one, two, no ones. Here we have this, zero, one, one, since two plus one is three. And then we have one, four, no twos and ones. Five, one, four, no twos and a one. Six, we have four, a two, and no ones. And then we have seven, which would be all ones. So one thing that we can just kind of observe right away as we just go that down the list here is notice that any of the other numbers, like if we had a longer binary representation for any of the other numbers as it would expand over to the left, we would have two, four, eight, 16, 32, all the other powers of two, and those would represent larger binary numbers. The only odd thing that we have here is this one. So all of the other numbers are powers of two, therefore they're even. And if we look at this first number here, zero, we have all zeros. So one, we know one is odd, and we have this one bit flipped on here. So for two, we have the one bit is flipped off, and then also this two here is, is turned on. For three, we know that's odd, and we see that the one bit is also flipped on here. Four is even, we see the one bit is flipped off. Five, one bit is flipped on. So you can kind of see that there's probably a pattern that has something to do with the uh, one bit here that has something to do with indicating whether or not a the binary representation of a number is even or odd. And indeed, you can kind of think about this logically. Basically, you can just think about uh, sort of accepting two observations. So if you accept the fact that adding one to an even number makes it odd, for instance, if you have, again, as we mentioned before, any of the larger binary numbers represented by other powers of two, those are just going to be even numbers, right? So you're only ever going to be dealing with even numbers out further to the left. Um, and basically, if you add one to that, you're going to make it odd. So two plus one would be three, four plus one would be five. You would have an odd number resulting from adding one to an even number. And the other thing to accept is that adding any number of even numbers will result in an even number. So 
these both of these statements are true, but you can just kind of play around with a few smaller cases to kind of convince yourself that that would be true. Try adding two plus four, that's six, plus four, um, you know, that's 10. So you could keep going and basically if you just keep adding even numbers, you're always going to arrive at an even number. So if you just add the powers of two that would follow the left side of this binary expansion, two, four, eight, 16, 32, if you were to add all those up, you would only arrive at an even number. The only time when you would add uh, arrive at an odd number would be when you include this one in the mix. So basically what we want to do is we want to, given the binary representation of a number, determine whether or not that one bit is flipped on or flipped off. So let's take a look at some other examples here. So let's put another comment and we'll say example, example, and let's think about the binary representation of the number one. So one is given by zero, zero, one, as we saw above. And then what we want to do is we want to find some way to check whether or not this bit here is turned on or off. So what we can do is we're going to make use of the logical AND operator, and we're going to determine whether or not this thing is turned on or off. So what we're going to do is we're going to AND the entire binary representation of this number one in this case by one. So what is that going to do? Well, the binary representation of one is all these zeros on the left side with a one on the very right. And so what we'll end up doing is we'll perform an AND operation against everything in this representation for the number that we're trying to determine whether it's even or odd. And basically, if this thing is true, if this one bit is not uh, turned to false, then we know that this one bit here was set to true. Let's actually just s step through that so I think it's a little bit easier to see. So what we're going to be doing effectively is we're going to perform the AND operation between these two binary numbers. So we're going to say AND between 1 and 1, that's 1, AND between 0 and 0, that's 0, and AND between 0 and 0, that's also 0. So just kind of moving these together here so they line up. So we have this, which is giving us the number one. Okay, let's take a look at another example and just see what sort of pattern we get as we continue on with this. Let's take another odd number. Let's take the odd number three. So the odd number three is given, as we saw above, by zero, one, one. And again, what we're going to do is the same strategy. We're going to AND this number, the binary representation of the number three, with the number one. Again, we're kind of flipping all of the other bits off because we're AND them together and if these are actually if this and remains on we know that this initial bit was on because we're anding this one here at the very far right with this bit here so if it's a zero it'll turn off if it's a one it'll stay on so let's actually go and do that same operation here so here we have zero zero and one so again what we have here is we have the number one again let me just put that little bar there to indicate that we're actually performing the AND operation between those two numbers. So let's take an even number and see what happens. So six, let's take six. Binary representation of six is given by one, one, zero. So again, what we're gonna do is we're going to AND the entire thing with one. So we're gonna take that ANDed with one. Put the little line there. And so what we can do here is again, the one ANDed with zero, so anything is going to get masked off that's zero. Again, one and zero, that's going to be zero. In this case, we're not going to have one, we're going to have a zero because one and zero is going to give us zero. And that's basically telling us that this last bit, since we're ending it with one, um, it's telling us that the bit here in the binary representation of the number that we're trying to determine whether it's even or odd is turned off. So we're going to get zero here. So basically the observation to take away, observation, is that ending the number one gives either zero or one. So in any case, whether it's even or odd. So basically it's going to give zero, it's going to give zero if even, and it's going to give one if odd. So if the number that we're after is even, we're going to get a result of zero here as we and one with the number that we're after. And otherwise, if the number is odd, we're going to obtain one. So after we and the binary representation of the number that we're after with one, we're going to arrive at the binary representation of one. So that's basically the takeaway. There's a lot of explanation there, but writing the actual function for this will be quite straightforward. So let's go ahead and write a function which we'll call is even odd, and it's going to take an integer, which we'll call x, so it's going to take the integer x, we'll explicitly mention that there, and then what we're going to do is we're going to check if x anded with 1, if this is equal to 0, so remember, if this is equal to 0, then this must be even, so if, if we take the 
essentially the binary representation of the number x and, and the entire thing with the binary representation of 1. If we arrive at 0, therefore we'll return even to denote that the number that we're after there is even. And otherwise, we'll just return odd to say that the number that uh, we have there that we fed into the function is odd. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. So let's go ahead and call, let's say print is even odd, and we'll call this on the number 26. So this should, this should yield even as a result. And then let's go ahead and try it on one that will assume that will yield odd. So let's go ahead and print is even odd for 25. So that is an odd number, so we should get the result of odd. So let's go ahead and write this. We'll clear the terminal. And then we'll say Python is even odd. And then indeed we get even for the result of 26. It tells us that 26 is an even number. And then odd for 25. So that's pretty much it for this video. We've just determined whether a number is even or odd based on this uh, and operation here. So I hope that video was helpful to you. And if you have any questions or comments or anything of the sort, please don't hesitate to leave them below in the comment section. As always, this code will be available on my GitHub page, so you can feel free to check it out, download it, play with it yourself. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Have a nice day.